Now we fill up on gasoline in dribs and drabs over the course of a year. So the price difference between premium and regular may seem small on a per visit basis. Yes, the percentage difference between the two grades has declined due to the more rapidly increasing cost of a gallon of any kind of gas. But the real cost spread of premium over regular has increased over the last six years in the US. Put another way, it used to cost you a little under 150 extra bucks a year to run premium, assuming 15,000 miles a year and 20 mpg from your car. But around 2004 it began to take off, and now it's a choice that costs more like $240 a year. Real money. Let's find out if it's worth it. Now, premium gas has this image, largely due to marketing, as being somehow maybe a more explosive kind of fuel that blows off all this additional power. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. Premium gas is high octane. Gasoline is, is first a blend of many components that have many different properties. And as such, octane is one of those properties. High octane allows you to compress the fuel more, higher pressure, higher heat, without spontaneous combustion. If you use regular or low octane gas in an engine that wants higher, the mixture may combust spontaneously in the cylinder before the spark sets it off. That's called pre-detonation or knock. That's the sound of your engine slowly coming apart. It's hurting your engine. There's a little mini explosion that goes on in this four cycle engine. One of the cycles is compression. When that goes out of whack, there's an explosion that's not good. It's a physical pressure wave traveling in the combustion chamber, and you're actually hearing the result of that pressure wave knocking against the metal parts in the combustion chamber. These explosions, they can hurt the internal of the engine, they can hurt the catalytic converter of the engine. The science that goes on when this four cycle engine does this combustion process is pretty high tech. When one of those elements is out of whack, it means it's not happening right. Now, high compression engines were all the rage back in the muscle car and pony car era, and they're big in racing, of course. But lately, car makers have been getting into high compression for everyday cars because they get more power out of little tiny engines that need less air and fuel to fill the cylinder each cycle. In other words, they create good power and use less gas. Now, why does premium gas or high octane gas cost more? This is a very contentious area. Refiners will tell you they get less of it out of a barrel of crude than they do regular. Secondly, they add different additives to it that will be used to increase the octane, and those are more expensive than just crude itself. The main additive back in the day used to be tetraethyl lead, which increases the octane beautifully, except it's lead. We don't do that anymore. But that's what gave rise to the old nickname for premium. They used to call it ethyl. With the removal of lead, you removed an octane source. And so other sources of octane were required. Now, today's modern cars, as you probably know, have sensors and computers and variable components all over them. As a result, they can sense knock from running low octane gas and adjust the engine slightly to compensate for it, knock it out. But there's a limit to that adaptability, depending on your car's design. That's why you want to just check your car's manual. It'll often tell you what octane level is okay and another one that's recommended. Also, maybe one to avoid on the minimum side. Sometimes regular's fine. Other cars say mid-grade at least, premium at best. Others say premium only. Okay, now when you go to the gas pump, you can look at the actual number button that you're going to select and look at the fine print and it will talk about a minimum octane number and under that it will typically say this sort of bit of math, R plus M over two. That's research octane plus motor octane divided by two, or the average of the two. So it, there are single cylinder engines that are used to calculate the octane of a given gasoline. So the research number tests its conduct at lower engine speeds and so it tends to be higher. And then the motor octane is conducted at higher engine speeds and tends to be lower. You take the average of the two and you come up with what we call the anti-knock index. And that's likely the number you'll see in a modern car manual. U.S. automakers have recently groused that octane in the U.S. is so low they can't make the kind of engines they offer in other markets. Smaller ones with even more power and greater efficiency. Just one point of clarification is that in places like Europe and South America, where the octane numbers that people call for are in the high 90s, 97s, 98s, 
that's only the research number, right? Here in the US, we do the research plus the motor and divide it by two. Put it in a nutshell, you're safe using the lowest grade of gas that your car manual doesn't forbid. That's your baseline. Typically, especially in higher performance cars though, there are tangible benefits to using the ultimate grade, the premium, especially if you want the full performance you paid for.